Today, Josh Shipp is a TV host, a best-selling author, renowned motivational speaker, but that is a long way from where he started out. Roll it. Josh Shipp grew up in foster care. The experience left him scarred. I was abused. I was raped. And everyone always saw that punk foster kid. And I always believed that's all I was ever going to be. Until he hit rock bottom and turned his life around. I believe being a man is not about driving a truck, shooting a gun. I believe being a man is about taking responsibility. Today, he works with teens who are as troubled as he was. And all you believe is th that what you are right now is all you're ever going to be. It's the biggest lie you're telling yourself. Josh doesn't let anything slide with his kids. Look, that cute smirk may work with everyone else. It will not work with me. You think I'm being unreasonable? Or with their parents. Sir, your family is bankrupt. You need to step up and be a man. Wow. I got a big reaction from the audience. Welcome, Josh Ship. Now, you were... You were kind of shaking your head a little bit watching that clip. Yeah, I'm not sure I should have said that to a man wearing camo. He likely had a gun on him. <laughs> so let's tell your story because it's very successful end result. Yeah. But you started out, at, you're, you're a foster kid, which means you were bouncing from place to place and typically not great places. That's true. My biological mom was 17 when she had me, and uh, she gave me up at the hospital abandoned me, took off, and I immediately entered in the foster care system, and uh, it was really challenging growing up, you know, bouncing from home to home, and a lot of the foster parents I ended up with were truly great, uh, but I had gone through a lot of different things which caused me to be defiant and rebellious and act out, and the interesting thing is that, you know, what we don't talk out, we act out, and right. so I had a lot of things going on in my life, a lot of challenges. I mean, think about it. As a baby, the first uh, message the world sent to me was don't trust anybody. Right. And so not only did I not trust people that I shouldn't, but the big problem was that I didn't trust people that I should. And, you know, I know a little bit about the foster care world and that what you said is really true. There are a lot of well-intentioned people absolutely. who absolutely open their homes to absolutely. kids they don't know. But what can happen is as you continue along, and you become defiant, yes. it becomes too much, and sometimes you end up in homes that aren't the best place. Did you experience some rough times? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, certain homes I was abused in mentally, emotionally, physically, sexually. Uh, you know, I became very heavy as a kid as a way to, I would eat in a way to, to try to numb my pain and run away from what I was going through. And uh, it, it's sort of funny now, not funny then. I remember I would actually keep this notebook with me. And I would enter the date I entered a home, and the date I exited the home, and the strategy that I used to get kicked out of it. And it became a game to me. I was so emotionally distant from it that I would ne not even give you a chance to try to get through to me. Because I just wanted you to get rid of me, because that was going to happen anyway. So let's get it over as soon as we can. Wow. It was like a game to me. And it's amazing where you are today, because that's a hopeless place. That, that kid doesn't survive. So what changed? Do you remember? Yeah, I mean, many things. For me, I had a sort of a rock bottom moment. Uh, and, and this is a lot of the kids that I work with. That's what I try to fast forward for them. I try to bring them face to face with some sort of rock bottom moment. Because the truth is, uh, for some kids, a rock bottom moment is six feet under. It's too late. For me, that was ending up in jail. I wrote a bunch of fraudulent checks as a kid. One of them was for my car insurance. I'm speeding. I get pulled over, handcuffed thrown in the back of the cop car, sent to jail, and my foster parents, who completely changed my life. And that's, I mean, that's a big point I want to make, is that every kid, every kid, regardless of what they're going through, is truly one caring adult away from being a success story. Wow. You just got me. That's really powerful. Man, and my, my final set of foster parents, the Wiedemeyers, they live in Yukon, Oklahoma, unbelievable, changed my life. By the way, not perfect, flawed themselves, didn't have all the answers, As didn't all have of us all are. the training. Absolutely. You know, your imperfections make you human and your humanity makes you influential. And these foster parents. Look at you. Come on. So you have a rock bottom moment. You're yeah. in jail. Yeah. And check this out. My parents, the Wiedemeyers, could have bailed me out that night, but chose not to very wise on their part. 
sometimes what we do as adults when our kids are going through things, because we love them, we care for them, yeah. we don't want to see them go through pain, and so we bail them out of their moments. But actually what you're doing is you're robbing them of the opportunity to develop and to mature. Because what happens when you don't punish them is that life will punish them. All right. Boy, that takes a lot of discipline. Jo I need Josh to be at my house to teach me how to parent. Hey, you, you know what, though? It's not about being a perfect parent. It's about being a consistent parent. That's all it's about. No one's perfect, so get over the idea that you have to be. Okay. Am I getting therapy right you now? You are. <laughs> all right, so I, I want to talk to Josh about his new show on Lifetime as well. I, I also am just curious about what you think about some of the other shows that have kids on them and stuff. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. The executive producers from Oprah Intervention and Lifetime approached me and said, we want to do something that's honest. It's a small town's fault. It's your parents' fault. It's everyone else's fault but your own. You have no sense of responsibility, and it disgusts me.